Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Locke, and I am with Colonial Farm Credit. And I am here today to kind of start about an, an introduction to business plans and uh, what we call our one page business plan model, which is a very uh, kind of quick summary over business plans and how to get them started. So I'll first start talking about the farm credit system. Farm credit was established in 1916 by Congress, uh, basically as a source for farmers and food producers, mainly because they couldn't get uh, financing elsewhere. Currently, we have around 72 to 75 local or organizations um, throughout the US in every state in America and we serve over half a million uh, borrowers. And some of our uh, financing services include real estate operating lines, which is basically an annual loan that you would pay off every year to help you with either planning or chemicals or some of those pre-harvest expenses. Term loans for things such as land, equipment, um, other farming needs, and then revolving credit equipment financing, which is basically an operating loan, but its main purpose is for equipment. And then we do offer appraisal services at Colonial Farm Credit, but we do not offer crop insurance and taxes, but other farm credit associations across America may offer those. So Colonial Farm Credit is a one of many organizations in the farm credit system. We currently have over 680 million loans to around 6,000 customers. And we serve most of the southeastern part of Virginia, as well as five counties in Maryland. And I believe we're at 85 employees now, uh, someone retired, but basically we're around 100 employees strong. So to kind of start off the presentation after that introduction, the main starting point is gonna be looking towards the future. That's really the first thing you wanna think of when you look to start building a business plan, just because without looking towards the future, you really can't build a informed plan that will serve all your needs. So some key questions are, what are your skills? What is your tolerance for risk? What is your capacity to deal with challenges? What is your capacity to lead others? And what is your capacity for self-discipline? And all these questions are very good in kind of determining what route your business may go or how fast you think it might grow or just different sorts of challenges and opportunities your business may face. Um, so this is a great place to start. So we first want to define success and success is different for everyone. It can be, I want to have the most number of acres. I want to have the, the most number of sales or Maybe it's not about sales, but it's just about maximizing profit. Um, there's different items which define success for everyone, and that's gonna impact your business plan because it's not just one goal that a business plan will have. It can be multiple, it can be one, and they vary widely. So for most people though, their, their idea of success kind of boils down to one part of that success model, um, which is enough profit to meet your goals for your family and your business. Um, while the broad scope of success might change for most people, what will lead you to that is having enough profit to meet your smaller goals to help you get to that large, large uh, portion of success. So 
after thinking about success and your different skills, you want to know your business. You want to plan to succeed, plan to be happy. You want to tell your story in your business plan, which is a big part in your business plan will also have a budget to show the numbers and it usually has a plan for contingencies in it. So there's three basic business skills that we've looked at. Um, and this can be broken down into many more, but the very broad ones are financial, production, and marketing. So most of you either are looking to gain skills in the production part or already have a base set of skills in the production part, but you may not have financial or marketing skills. So there's a quote we found, um, not exactly sure where this is from, but if you're lucky, you have two of these skills, partner with or hire the skill you don't have. Um, so basically, this is sort of your networking. You wanna build a network to help you figure out how to navigate these three different skills and maximize um, both your network and your skills to work in a coherent fashion. So now that we've kind of thought about the business plan and the business itself, we want to really get down into what it is on paper. So your business plan is going to be a written description of your business that basically tells a story almost like if it was a, a nonfiction book. You want to be complete in your business plan and you don't want to leave anything out. Now, there are no specific rules for developing this business plan or nonfiction book as we're considering it, but you want to structure it in a way that, that meets all of your business's needs and kind of goes in a coherent way with how your business is set up. So what we're mainly talking about today is the one page business plan, which is the simplest of plans um, you can mainly do. It's, it's really two pages front and front and back, but it consists of a cash flow statement as well as a kind of flow chart of different goals. Um, and we call these SMART goals, which you may have heard before, which stand for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. And this is important because you wanna be specific so you know exactly what it is. You want to know how to measure it. You, know, you want it to be achievable and relevant because if you create a goal that you know you can't meet, then it, it's not helping you or your business. So this is the, the goal side of the sheet. I believe Susan will be able to get this out to everyone here. I will, um, if she doesn't have a copy of these slides, I will get her some slides so that way she can get these slides out. But basically, you're, this is the part where you talk about your different objectives and plans. So you have multiple SMART goals for different objectives and everyone's objectives are gonna be slightly different and then your SMART goals are obviously gonna be different. So we've kind of created an example plan just to go over. So in this scenario, the different objectives are people, financial, production, and marketing. Um, so I think that speaks true to a, to a lot of people, but it it could be it could be some else. It could be research or education in one of them. Uh, it, it really all pertains to what you think you would like to do to help grow your business. So here we've gone even further from the previous example of creating a, a fake scenario. So this we have the business of Tyler's Tip Top Tomatoes LLC and his mission statement is to grow good food, make good money and be good people. So I'll go back to before we have the objective one, which is people. So that's to his objective is achieve an appropriate balance of work and home life, which I think this rings true with 
most people out there. So his, his SMART goal is to take Sundays off and the action plan from that SMART goal in your action plan should have all of those SMART acronyms of it, in it is to, to train Charlie for Sunday's tasks and to give him numbers to call in case of an emergency. And his second part of his action plan is just to measure, measure his performance. So I'll go back again and kind of look at the production side. So his production objective is to increase efficiency while offering customers wider selections. So his SMART goal is to decrease cost of goods sold on his tomatoes, which could either be the, the seed cost, chemicals, et cetera. So his action plan to reach his SMART goal is to measure production per worker and per variety, set pest traps, and scout the different tomatoes. So this is his action plan on how he's going to meet his SMART goal. And he also has a different SMART goal. So it's not just limited to one goal, but they should all be the acronym of SMART, which is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. And having these goals will help you push towards the overall success or what you imagine success to be for your business. So this is um, the next part, which would be to develop a budget for your business. And this budget consists of both a historical average as well as a um, projection. So basically the way to create your historical one, which everyone should be keeping good records. Records are a very, important part of your business. Um, basically, without good records, you could be great at production, but might not be able to be, be good in the long run just because of the records you are, the records you keep aren't accurate. So the first part in doing this budget for the one page business plan is to look at your historical sales so we have over here um, the dollar amount you would put, which would be 100% of your sales. So then you would have the cost of goods sold. And this is variable costs, um, which variable costs will depend widely on what, what stage um, you are in, what production you're in, what do you grow, et cetera, but it can be chemicals, type of seed, uh, basically anything that doesn't stay the same, like per se rent for land stays the exact same. Or if you're growing a set number of things each year, then you might have some set costs that never really change. So your sales minus your variable costs, and you would also put this in a percentage form equals your gross margin and your gross margin percentage. So your gross margin is important when we get over to your budget. But anyways, in the, to find out your profit of that year, you would subtract the fixed costs. And this is like rent, utilities, basically things that are gonna stay the same year to year. And from there, you have a percentage as well. So for instance, if cost of goods sold was 50%, then your gross margin would be 50%. Let's say your overhead costs were 20%, then your profit would be 30% of your sales. So our, our next step is to create our budget from the bottom up. And for this, we, we start with the desired draw amount that you would want for your operation including taxes, which is very important just because if you don't include taxes, then if you follow your budget exactly and you didn't include taxes, then you're hit at the end of the year with a tax liability, which can 
impact your, your business. And we also have principal portions of any loan payment. So the principal portion of a loan payment is basically what you're gonna pay that year in principal. So basically, if you, let's say a truck loan, you're gonna pay so much that year in principal that goes towards the principal balance of your truck loan. So we're at step five now, which is adding your overhead expenses to the required profit to figure the gross margin of the operation will need to yield. Um, and like I said before, your overhead expenses shouldn't change much from previous year unless you're doing a significant expansion, which basically if you're expanding, all your expenses are probably gonna increase. So we can see over here, the own, owner draw desired plus the principal payment required equals the total profit required. Um, let's see here. And then you would add your overhead expenses to get your gross margin required. So then we're on to step six, which is to determine the break even sales needed in your operation to support the overhead obligations and profit required. We do this by dividing the gross margin E, which we figured up by the gross margin over in the historical chart. So I know this is all kind of complicated, so we had made a little scenario to kind of help explain it. So I'll go through all the steps again. You have your historical, which is basically the year before. We had a total sales of 200,000. That's 100% of our sales. We had the cost of goods sold, which again is our variable cost, things that change that we're not exactly sure about what will be every year on a consistent basis. We had 120,000 or 60% of those. So our gross margin, which is what we earn before our fixed costs is 80,000 or 40%. So then we had an overhead cost, which again is land rent, utilities, things that really stay the same of 60,000 or 30%, leaving us with a profit of 20,000 or 10% of our total sale number. So then our next step is creating a budget for the next year. Um, you can also think of your budget kind of like a projection sheet. In, in realities, you want your projections and your budgets to match, which is why I, I kind of think they're one in the same. They, they, they can differ a little bit, but your projection should really match your budget because otherwise you won't meet your projections with your budget or you won't meet your budget with your projection. So in this scenario, we wanted an owner draw of 30,000, which is 10,000 higher than the previous year. So, to figure out now how much sales we need to reach that 30,000 based on last year, we're gonna add our principal payment, which is any of our principal payments to loans at 20,000 to get $50,000 total profit required. And then we're gonna add back our overhead expenses, which won't change from the previous year. And that's an important thing because if your overhead expenses change, then this kind of budget formula doesn't look exactly the same. So you would add your overhead expenses so we would get a gross margin required of 110,000. So from there, we're gonna divide that 110,000 by that 40% we calculated when we are figuring out the historical figure. So we're gonna take 110 divided by by 40,000, which is calculated over here, to get a total sales volume of $275,000. So 
according to this scenario, in order to increase this man's profit by 10,000, you would need to increase his sales volume by 75,000. So th this is a good kind of uh, equation to use when you wanna figure out what exactly you're gonna need to sell to, to get what you want. Because sometimes it's hard to think about, okay, I wanna increase my my profit by so much, but you're not really sure on how to get there. So this, this basically is a good indication that of how much you would need to sell to how much you would make. So those are kind of the two main parts of our small business plan. Here, I we just broke it out again to show it in a little bit of a bigger screen. So I know for some of you that may be small looking at. So again, we, are, we had our sales, cost of goods sold. And then when you subtract cost of goods sold, you get the margin, subtract your overhead, and you get profit. So now we're going to kind of talk about moving this thought to a a budget or a Excel sheet or basically any sort of electronic sheet that most people may use to keep their records. So we can break this idea further down into the concept of cash flow budgeting, which is basically the same thing as we had before, but instead of doing it yearly, we can do it monthly. So basically in this example, you take January, your total income minus your variable cost, which um, where the cost of goods sold equals your gross margin. And then you subtract your fixed cost, which is the overhead to get your net margin. Um, and then you add back any beginning cash in your monthly cash flow is a, is that number which becomes your beginning cash for the next month. So you keep doing that and that's a good way if you have monthly expenses and monthly income that you can track that. Now, if your income for your operation is gonna be more of a yearly thing where you don't really have income coming in, income going out, then you don't need to do this monthly concept so much because it may not be applicable to you. But for instance, if you're selling flowers or, or different plants, even vegetables, and you have income constantly coming in and you have expenses constantly going out, as opposed to maybe a row crop like corn, where you kind of have your planting expense and then you have your harvesting expense and then you have your income from that harvest. So Robert, again, asking a question. Okay, so, sorry. It's okay for a beginning farmer. He says, "Where can I find a sample one-page business plan to refer to and tailor it?" Any suggestions? Can you, can you repeat that question again? He said, "For a beginning farmer, where can they find a sample one-page business plan to refer to so they can tailor it for their operation?" Okay, yes. Um, well, as well as hopefully Susan being able to send it to you, it's, I, I'll, I'll get to it, but basically here is a www.farmbiztrainer.com. We'll have a whole bunch of resources and then the specific suite or kind of thing we're talking about would be under backslash resources backslash groups, backslash one page business suite. Um, so th there's the specific way to, to get to it. Thank you, I was, I was gonna get to it in the end, but for people who maybe if they wanna pull it up on their phone or something to have when, when during this presentation, that would, that would be good.
So here is a um, cash flow analysis, which in this scenario, in I know it may be kind of hard to see. Uh, basically, we're we're kind of adjusting from doing in-person presentations with large slideshows to some people looking the, looking at this on on a phone. So I know it may be a little difficult, but basically, in this scenario, if someone has budgeted every month like we had talked about which gives them their annual total in their percent of sales so you can really take a simple idea of getting this historical figure of sales cost of goods sold overhead and profit and really expanding that to have a full a full-blown uh, trend of every month so maybe you can go back and look at this trend and see oh in in March I'm spending a lot but I'm not getting a lot of money and in income so that may tell you in March I need to have this reserve of income to spend later on so by doing this every month or annually, it allows you to better better understand your business and the different aspects that are happening within your business that you may not realize if you didn't think about the number or size. So this is just another scenario and this person broke it down even, even further with, with their farm income being labeled as CSA, farmer's market, fruit sales, government payments, and other. So they have, instead of just income, they have all their different revenues of income. And then same thing for their cost of goods sold and fixed costs. So for cost of goods sold, you have purchases for resale, feed, fuel, and that was basically all of their cost of goods sold, overhead, vendor fees, insurance, repairs, utilities, marketing. But basically, they took this scenario and broke it down even more. So for every kind of large idea, you can keep breaking it down and really pinpoint different sections of your business. Because you may say, man, I'm spending a lot on fixed costs, but because you're not breaking it down as much, you really can't see where that's coming from. So again, the, to download the live spreadsheet as well as the other aspects of www.farmbiztrainer.com is the larger site which has multiple different things. But this uh, one page planning suite is at resources backslash groups backslash one page planning suite. So I'm gonna stop here just to see if there are any questions regarding the numbers aspect with the spreadsheet. Okay, I'll, I'll move forward. Um, basically, this is just an image we found, I think, on Google. But basically, this is your business. Um, and when you really, most people just kind of think of the selling inventory part and the receiving cash part. But really the business is, it starts at the cash and it kind of cycles, but you gotta buy inventory or buy goods. And um, then you gotta merchandise this inventory in some way, whether it's planning um, or if you, work with a co-op or some basically you're you're going to be using your inventory in some way and uh producing things and and making things so then you're going to sell your inventory which is your accounts receivable which goes to various different things whether you're receiving that cash in profit or whether you have loans to pay rent to pay taxes to pay etc but it's a it's a cycle and it's not just kind of the production and the income part, it's really 
the beginning process and how it keeps starting over and how every month is almost a new cycle. So we've kind of talked about the one page business plan, which kind of uses diagrams to discuss the different aspects you may want to have. Um, but now we're going to kind of discuss a little bit of a larger business plan that um, kind of piggybacks off of the one page business plan and helps you get started for there's people out there with, like I said, you want to have it like a book, they have their daily routine summarized in every aspect and contingency plan. So basically, you can get as large or small as you want. Um, it, it's really up to do up to you and what works best for your business. So kind of the the written out business plan structure, it would consist of a title page, which is just the name of the business, maybe who the owners are, et cetera. A table of con contents, like I said, it's like a nonfiction kind of book. You you would have a table of cons to find different aspects about your business. The executive summary, which may be one of the most important parts, which gives you a preview and summary of the plan, it's usually around, uh, usually it's around one to two pages. Uh, and it's usually written after everything is complete. So it's kind of like saving the first part of the book for for the end, just because you don't you don't know how the end is gonna work out. So it's also going to include a description of the business, which should be the easiest part, should be where you can write about how you do business, how you're a producer, uh, the different things that impact your business, just basically a description of, of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you're going to include an industry analysis because your business could rely heavy on, on an industry. Um, for example, a lot of um, dairy producers rely heavily on on that industry, and there's not so much a farm to table option in most communities where you can sell your your milk in individually. So they they rely heavily on on the industry. So then you're going to have a mission statement and core values. So why do you do it and why do you want to do it? And that that's a really important part because as as I've heard, it, if you are just doing it for really no reason, it, it speaks volumes and you really want to know why you're doing what you do. So then it's also going to have a management plan, which could be a couple of sentences and it could be couple pages. Basically, it's just whether you're a partnership, LLC, single individual, um, what's the structure of your business, what are your qualifications. Um, it, again, it can be as, as small as one paragraph to as large as a couple pages. And then the second part, which should be very simple, just like the, the description part, is your products and production process. So what do you sell? How do you produce it? So that consists of quality, quantity, um, competitive advantage, basically anything regarding to what you sell and how you produce it. So then there's going to be a marketing plan. Um, and again, this can be a small or large depending on how complex of uh, processes you have but target customer, product features, pricing, distribution, advertising, and what we call SWOT analysis, um, basically strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So, and then the financial plan, which is what we had talked about, which includes balance sheet, income statement, historical trend is what we went over, and then the projections, which is basically your budget because as I said your projection should follow your budget as closely as possible now obviously they're not going to be exactly the same nothing works out to be 
perfectly aligned, but you want to budget for your projections and you want to project for your budget. So they should be relatively the same in almost the same thing in most cases. And then you may or may not have an appendency, appendices, um, depending on how long your, your business plan is. So a lot of times we get the question, how quickly can you make money? And in that you have the kind of goal of producing cash in six months, really. Um, when you're starting out, you can most of the time bet you won't make a good stream of revenue before the six months. Um, if you if you basically are starting out fresh, I mean, obviously, if you already own land, if you have connections in the farming community, different things can impact it. But you, when you're starting out fresh, it's like any business. Um, most businesses say you want to have a reserve to help you keep going in the first six months, first year, basically as you get your foot in the ground. So. You want to budget and project to accomplish goals. So your budget shouldn't just be a repeat of what last year was. It should be looking forward to the new year and what goals you wish to accomplish, how you think you're going to accomplish that goals. And your budget and your numbers should reflect your feelings or attitudes towards the next year. It shouldn't always be, okay, this is what I did last year going to be the same this year. So the first two things you want to do first are pay your bills, which is paying yourself or not paying yourself, but basically make sure you're able to pay yourself and then pay your living expenses. So before anything, you want to pay, pay your liabilities and you want to pay to have food on the table, uh, rent, etc. Those should be your two kind of main main concerns. You can always buy a new a new tractor later or a new sprayer later or any more land or you can always do that later, but you really want to make sure you have your main needs first. So all of this may kind of sound like a lot in overwhelming but some things that either make it easier depending on people or make it easier to swallow doing depending on other people is record keeping is required for taxes. So if you file a schedule one or schedule C, which is the income tax schedule for businesses or farming, then you would, you would need these numbers anyways. So to keeping good records for taxes, can help you keep good records for your business plan. Um, the ultimate goal is to manage from the records. So instead of, let's say something goes wrong, you wanna look at your business plan and okay, I have a contingency, I had thought about this already, this is what we're gonna do. Uh, again, need up-to-date and accurate records just because without good records, you can't manage from your records. Um, and you want to create a budget with the expectations of measurable results, which goes back to what I previously talked about with the SMART goals, um, making sure they're obtainable, um, specific, and in a timely manner, just because it's one, discouraging, and then B, kind of throws your whole business model out of the loop when you're going to say, I'm gonna do X in a year when you know it's not realistic. So that kind of concludes the presentation. I know I went through it kind of fast, but because I think we had a smaller than expected group, I wanted to really get some good questions. Um, And I can go back to a slide if someone would want to see a slide again.
Robert, how would you recommend people make sure they get personal time? Because I know I've owned a business 21 years and it's really challenging sometimes to make sure you have time for you and your family. Yeah, that's one of the, the most important things because as, um, as if you're doing this part-time or realistically part-time is really full-time and then you're just working two full-time jobs, but you, you want to budget that aside. So that can be part of your business plan. Like, let me see if I can go back here. So objective one in Tyler's tip top tomatoes was achieve an appropriate balance of work and life. Um, now, I know not everyone has employees or daughters, sons to help them on the farm, whatever it may be, but if you make that a goal, and to be honest, maybe the SMART goal wasn't all, all that SMART in the sense of the different things, but if, let's say I want an hour more a day, that's very specific. I measured, I want an hour, uh, I, I think an hour is achievable for most people, relevant and time-based. So from that SMART goal, of I want an hour, which would fit those qualifications. You can think, okay, how do I get that hour? Do I either have to sacrifice something or do I have to learn a new skill? Do I have to grow my network and maybe have someone help me with one of the financial one, the production or one of the marketing skills. Um, again, it, it should be based in that business plan. Um, so basically you should, your plan should kind of tell you all about your business because even though we work for our business and we were around our business and we may be our business at all times, it's sometimes when you're stressed about a certain thing like, having time for yourself, it may be hard to really take a step back and look at it. Whereas if you have kind of a written explanation out for you, you can maybe use that to help yourself in figuring out a way to create time. Yeah, I see a question in the chat here. It says, is there a community group or team who can help to review business plans and provide feedback? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at one time there was a, a plan with VSU that helped you do that. Am I wrong about that, Susan? Um, the small farm program does do some of that when we're working with beginning farmers uh, as part of your whole farm plan and your business plan because we actually encourage you to do that before starting production. Um, so there's a way, um, and I know not all of you have financial advisors or anything, but there are a way, um, basically farm credit is a way we can always offer guidance of uh, we may not be able to review your whole plan but we we should be able to offer you guidance and um i apologize usually i i have a stack of my cards uh at these presentations but i can put in the chat my email as well as cell phone number and basically i i can be a, a resource to help you financially um, so it basically there, there's no one right answer for that, but I do know, um, or Susan explained the small farm program kind of helps with that. And then and basically other experts in your network, whether it be family member and thank you with that. I will offer, there are a lot of great, um, resources online as well as in in that website I shared the um the the, the farm biz website basically there are a lot of good resources out there to kind of look at, at it 
and basically I know it's kind of hard to curtail uh, advice sometimes that's made for like selling shirts or more of a retail production, not in farming, but where it really helps is having that, uh, that spreadsheet from the farm biz website to help you kind of see the farm aspect of it with the different maybe variable costs or fixed costs that someone may have in farm production. Um, now, Robert, I will say as a business owner, and I do very soon when I sell in my flower shop, but um, small business administration here in Virginia has been really helpful with a lot of free resource and economic development. Those are both really great places to help with your finance piece. Somebody else had another question. <clears throat> when you are starting a new business, um, how can you incorporate land purchase into startup business plan? Um, kind of a, a tough question because I think it differs for everyone. Um, but basically, when you're starting a new business, you have to really think about, do I want to rent land or do I want to buy land? Um, and basically your individual financial situation will really play a big part into that. Um, and then it's also how soon do I want to start farming? Do I want to buy this land with kind of my excess savings and everything kind of recoup when, when you're ready? Or do I want to roll right into it, sign a land lease and start farming right away? That I feel like I'm talking around this question, but it does differ drastically depending on who, who you are. Um, I guess it could you could think of it as like buying anything, buying a car, buying a uh, a piece of equipment. It, it a lot of it has to do with financial financial ability um, in where you are in the start of your business. I think I I figured out another. Way Yeah, so I figured out a way to see the chat. Um, it took me, okay. it took me a little while. Yeah, it's a little um, weird when you're doing a, a share. Uh, is there a way to see what is in demand ahead of time for smaller producers, not large scale commodities like corn, cotton, etc.? How do I know? How do I know what to grow with what I have? Um. So again, that kind of going to depend whether you're in Virginia Beach versus Suffolk versus the mountains because everything differs. But I would say go into your farmer's market, kind of looking at what's popular just in the in the market in general, because a, a lot of health foods are organic, homegrown, uh, paleo, that's really popular nowadays. So that's what smaller producers can kind of grow on that maybe not a lot of larger producers can, can do. So it's, I would say just be cognizant of the environment around you in the different trends that are going around in your community. Uh, if I'm reading the question right, there's no real way to say what exactly is going to have a higher demand ahead of time before the season starts like i i can't tell you if apples are going to be more popular than oranges i'm i know you're probably not growing oranges but i it's it's a little hard just to say like with commodities it, it's even hard to say whether corn or cotton is going to be strong or weak um we do have the number of acres and so planted and I believe if you're registered with FSA as like a farming operation what you grow gets counted towards they release a summary um, I'm not sure if it's every year or every other year but USDA re releases kind of a summary of the amount of income coming from different products a year so per state so you can kind of look at that um uh, i'm really not sure if i answered your question i i hope i did 
Um, but that can be difficult. Um, but I would say instead of searching for what people want, I would say think of that as kind of a second thought and maybe grow what you can grow best. Because even if the demand's not super strong, the demand's kind of average, if you can grow something better than anyone else, it's still the best product on in your community or on the local market, et cetera. So you still have an advantage instead of maybe trying to grow a product that no one else is growing, but you think will be popular and you may grow a subpar product. So I'm not sure I answered your question, but hopefully I did. So I'm not sure if they're asking based on how much land they have or what experience they have, but those are definitely considerations. If you haven't grown before, you probably want to get some experience maybe with community garden or some of the university programs when that's available. On our Small Farm Resource Center, we have a beginning farmer orientation packet that kind of gives you things to consider about the market, about your abilities, about what you really are capable of doing. I think some of those are things to look at too because you're saying smaller producer. So I'm guessing you're on smaller land or you have less labor force. And I don't know if you're yeah. an in farmer or not, so that would make a difference. Yeah, that kind of goes to my point about what you can grow the best. Um, it's not always what is going to be in demand more than something else. It's kind of about what 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 is the best thing for you to grow because you may try and grow something that's really popular, but if you don't have the means or the land, or um, you're not in the right region, bad soil, et cetera, then it still wouldn't be productive to grow that, that popular item if your product isn't gonna maximize both your experience and resources available. Yeah, Susan and Victor in the chat, that's exactly. Um, so you can see how much was grown the year before and stuff. Um, but again, it, it's hard to tell, is this gonna be popular or not popular um, based on the amount being grown, but it may be a way to help you figure out what to grow. Um, Well, let, let me uh, put down my cell phone number and then my email in the chat for everyone. Susan brought up a good point. I would say um, if you can't find things on the internet or any other resources, uh, BSU or Virginia Tech expense, uh, extension is a great place to go for different information regarding the specific crops. I like to say I have enough knowledge about the growing of crops to get myself in trouble. That's something I 
I'm in I'm the in the in the environment of growing different crops and looking at it, but I'm not probably the best person to to ask about how to grow something or the different techniques and such. Are there any other questions? Oh, I see one here from, if you have a production operation and plan on developing a sideline retail market, do you need a separate business plan? Um, I, I would say maybe not a plan, but definitely a subsection. You would, you would want, because that's, in reality, that's really two businesses. Um, they can work in conjunction with each other, obviously, but you would want to have a separate plan for the retail as well as the production because I mean production is production and selling is selling so I would say I would say yes they don't have to be separate plans but you would want to talk about the retail market as much as the production side. So I don't see any more questions. I think we've got everybody answered. I know we you had said like 45 minutes was fine, but I figured we were better just to give it an hour just in case. Yeah, no, no, no problem at all. Um, I obviously wanted wanted to have some good questions because someone can be talking and without questions that it may not make sense. So I'm glad we got some questions. In. Like I said, we're going to plan on doing a, a follow-up in two to four weeks once the transcripts and recording are all put together. That sounds great. I I appreciate you guys having me here to um, discuss the one-page business plan.